You can say whatever you want. You can tell me to screw myself. You can. I'm gonna tell you, you look fabulous with your scruff. <laughs> um, I'm here with Dave Cohen, creator of Will and Grace, who's graciously agreed to spend a few minutes with us uh, just off the set from his new show, Shit My Dad Says. Dave, I want to get one thing out of the way at the top. Did you or did you not single-handedly mastermind the overturn of the ban on gay marriages in the state of California in an attempt to undermine the American way of life now and forever into the future? Yes, I did. I masterminded the whole thing, but my goal was not to undermine the American way of life. My goal was, for have, it was to have gay people experience the same kind of misery as straight people. Why, why should just straight people have to experience the burdens of marriage? It's not fair. Exactly. So now, how does it feel to be the man who's brought in both homosexuality and profanity to primetime? I couldn't be prouder. My, my, my mother couldn't be prouder. Also, I mean, I guess it's better to distinguish yourself in some way. <laughs> Why the backlash from, I've, I've seen all this stuff on the web, from parents groups against shit? It's such a man, purely man concept. It is. I don't know any women do shit, first of all. What do you think has driven the uh, interest in the book and then now your show? What is, what's caught fire? I, you know, it's, first of all, well, first of all, he's funny. You know, and second of all, I think people respond to the same thing that we responded to. There was something appealing about a guy who, on the one hand, you know he loves his son. That comes through even with the, with the harshness. And at the same time, he gives you the unvarnished truth in, in its ugliest form, and he doesn't care how you feel about it. So he loves you, but he's not going to bullshit you. And, and, and I think that that's a really good character. People have always responded to those kinds of characters. What do you think it says about guys our age and their desire to reconnect with their fathers? And I think that that is what's at the heart of this. It's like guys, you know, young men seeking the approval or the respect of older men who they hold in high regard. One of the things we ask guys is, how would you describe your dad in two words? Mother's husband. And I'm just going to throw this in because I'm really interested. How would you describe Ron Artest in two words? Fucking crazy. And how are you different from your father? Um, my dad, my dad is, uh, I, I'm a tiny, tiny bit less passive. Just a tiny bit. Just a little bit less passive. And how are you different from Ron Artest? Not. I mean, to me, it is, it is we are almost indistinguishable. <laughs> um, so you, we, were, we were talking before, what do you think in this show, I mean, in Will and Grace, uh, you were bringing something to primetime that hadn't been there before, and it was touching something that, you know, was missing in how we represent America on TV. Um, in this show, what is it that it's touching? You, you, you were saying before about um, men and their fathers. Um, is it really something about manhood, too, though? Yes. And, and the idea, and, and hopefully the idea that, that, when it comes to that kind of relationship, you could have screwed up for a really long time, but you have the opportunity for some kind of redemption. Like that, you know, in in, in the in the construct here, you know, he he was a bad dad. He was kind of an absentee dad, and he was he was uh, he was difficult, and he was uh, tough. But at the same, but the thing that he will hopefully learn and is trying to make good on is this notion that. You know, no matter how old your kids get, it's never too late to be a dad. You can forge a relationship. You can try to teach, you know, or you can be a figure in a person's life like this, you know, and and you can rectify to some degree or at least make good on some of the mistakes you make. Do you think in general Hollywood treats men fairly in terms of how they portray, you know, our lives? I mean, my life's pretty complicated, as you described marriage and kids and all that. Do you think that Hollywood's fair in how they portray us? I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's. I mean, certainly in in twenty one minute sitcoms, it's going to be somewhat reductive unless you're a real simpleton like some of the guys we went to school with. But like, <laughs> um, Captain Kirk is the one. Oh, Captain, my Captain, who I'm currently working with right now. And why? And I think. 
Why Captain Kirk? First of all, first of all why not? Okay? And second of all, here's the thing about this guy. He is... He's a guy who can say mean things and you still love him for it. From what mistake did you learn the most? I know there's so uh, few. Yeah, I know. It's really, really what I would think would be easier because of that. Um, uh, from what mistake did I learn the most? I guess my first marriage. Yeah. Well, I'm there with you, you know, man. I, I'm right yeah, there with you. I, I think I learned that that you know going going outside of yourself to please somebody will fuck you up. When's the last time you cried? Let's see. It is now one fifteen years ago. Years <laughs> ago, seriously. You know, I, I cry at movies. I cry at movies, and I and I occasionally cry if I'm imagining something bad befalling my children, you know. But it 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 I I don't know if I've got the. If I, I mean obviously I've constructed some kind of wall, but I just don't. I also have a pretty happy life. That's all I got, dude. It, it is a good show for the station. I mean, for for the good men project. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it does seem to deal with. I mean, it superficially at first, and then, and then over time, I think it will get more into those kinds of issues. And if it doesn't work, just get Ron Artest on the show. Did you hear that? <laughs>